Boy, how you doing? It's me, your boy. These piglins definitely chose to do this here. Welcome to another spicy tutorial. Today's farm tutorial has to do with bartering. Piglin bartering is a really cool mechanic. It was added in the Nether update. This farm lets you barter automatically. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to build the easiest automatic bartering farm in the entire game. This farm is seriously so easy to build. Like, literally, if you don't even know how to count, you could probably still build this farm. It's super simple. This farm is also pretty compact. You should be able to fit it just about anywhere. Set one of these things up in your nether and then do something nearby, come back to it after a little while, and you should have quite a bit of fancy bartering loot, including, maybe, if you're lucky, some soul speed 3. This tutorial should be pretty quick, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave timestamps down in the description anyways if you need to skip around or if you get lost. If you enjoy the tutorial or if it helps you out, hit that like button and give that subscribe button a good visit too. We're almost at 700k subscribers, we can do it, let's go. So first off, I'd like to intro this tutorial with a little bit of bartering talk. Piglin bartering. Why would you want to barter with the piglins? Well, bartering with piglins can get you a lot of cool things. Bartering with piglins is one of the only ways to get your hands on the soul speed enchantment and one of the only ways to get crying obsidian. Bartering with piglins can also yield you quite a bit of other useful things like fire resistance potions, spectral arrows, and quartz. To barter with piglins, all you need is gold, which, spoiler alert, it's pretty useless. Bartering, big good. All right, so the bartering machine, what are we looking at in terms of supplies? To build a bartering farm, you're going to need these supplies right here. Now, in the top of the chest, I have things in exact amounts. One hopper, one chest, one dropper, one redstone comparator, and a redstone torch. You're also going to want to have an unspecified amount of building blocks on hand. Maybe staircase variants as well. Whatever you really want to do with the thing, it's your call. Having a button might be a good idea as well to get this thing started. Now, for this farm, you are going to need one piglin. To keep the piglin a piglin, unless you've modified game rules, you're gonna need to stay in the nether. So this farm needs to be built somewhere in the nether. Any biome is cool. You're also going to want to have a name tag so you can keep that piglin there forever. Alternatively, you could just give the piglin a piece of armor and the piglin shouldn't despawn. But I'm kind of paranoid, so I like the name tag route. You're also gonna wanna have a way to relocate the piglin to your farm. So maybe a boat, a minecart, you know, something like that. To use the farm, you're gonna need gold. Get a lot of gold. I also recommend having some extra chests ready. This farm can fill up pretty quickly and some extra hoppers too. We'll talk about all of that after the build. All right, so the build. To start, of course, you're gonna wanna find a spot to build this build. Lucky you, you can build this anywhere in the nether, but I definitely recommend building this in a spot that's gonna be loaded in a lot. Somewhere that you're gonna be near, maybe by your nether hub or your nether base. If this farm isn't loaded in, it's obviously not gonna run. Once you've found your build site, start by digging down into the ground one block place a redstone torch down there then place a chest up here and a hopper above the torch going into the chest just like that now grab some building blocks what building blocks well any building block will do but i definitely don't recommend using like wood or leaves or something like that that would be a pretty bad idea you know nether fire kind of uh yep yeah. It's just not a good idea. Build building blocks around your hopper two blocks high, just like this. Now we're actually gonna come back and swap this building block out in a little bit, but don't worry about it right now. After you've placed your building blocks down, it's piglin time. Go find a piglin. This piglin needs to be an adult piglin though, so find a better piglin. Then maybe put that piglin in a boat or a minecart and move it all the way back over to your farm, wherever you're building it. I recommend getting in the boat and steering it right up against the chest if you went the boat route. So now we have something that looks like this right here. For this next part, have a name tag ready. Grab a gold ingot and drop it on top of the hopper. The torch down below the hopper is locking the hopper so it won't go into it. Then unleash the piglin and grab some building blocks. Quickly move the piglin on top of the hopper and then trap the piglin inside of that area just like that right there. The piglin will throw you something that's cool, you don't need it right now. After all of that, name tag the piglin. You need to name tag the piglin, otherwise it's going to despawn. Alternatively, like I mentioned earlier, you could put some armor on the piglin, but I'm paranoid and I like the name tag idea. After all of that, place a building block right on top of the piglin, so it's trapped there forever. All right, so now we have something that kind of looks like this. It's not the best looking thing in the world, but this is good so far. Now what we're gonna wanna do is actually break this block and this block and place a dropper facing inwards at the piglin. Then we can go ahead and put that block back. Make sure you have a ceiling block on it, otherwise the piglin could jump out. Now we need a redstone circuit. Basically, we want to detect when an item goes inside of this hopper right here. That's actually pretty easy. For the circuit, we're actually gonna need this redstone torch back so you can go ahead and dig under the farm and get rid of the redstone torch. It's not a final part of the farm. 
at least down there. So anyways, the circuit. Start by placing a comparator that is coming out of your hopper. Then place a block that that comparator is going into. On top of that block, place a redstone torch, and finally, place a block right above that redstone torch. That is the entire circuit right there. Now when you place this block right next to your dropper, it actually should activate. That's normal. But nothing probably happened because your dropper's empty. So to fix that, go inside of the dropper and place a bunch of gold. The more gold, the better. After all of that, you can go ahead and place the block back down to get it to activate, or you could just place a button on the side of the thing, press the button, and have it spit out a piece of gold. Then you could get rid of the button. And boom, that is the farm. It is now up and running, actually. Now, this farm does not look good. I would definitely recommend spending some time to detail your farm, make it look a little bit better, but I mean, if that's not what you're into and you just want the thing to work, then there you go, it works. Now, extra chests and hoppers. First off, I definitely recommend expanding this chest at least once so you have a double chest, but you probably should expand it more if you're going to AFK over a long period of time. If items start getting left in this hopper, the farm is going to stop working uh, immediately. You need the items to be able to leave your hopper for this circuit to actually turn on and off and activate. What's happening here is when something's inside of the hopper, the comparator turns on and powers this block. This block is then powered and the torch is depowered, which means this block is depowered. Once the item leaves the hopper, everything turns off and this block is powered by the torch right there and gold is dropped out of the dropper. It's kind of confusing at first, but once you think about it a little bit, it makes a lot of sense. So anyways, definitely make this a double chest. Now, if you have a lot of gold or maybe even a gold farm, you could link this thing right up to that. If you had a gold farm, you could run hoppers going right into this dropper right there, and then your gold farm would be up here. You know, gold would get funneled right in. Or maybe you just have a lot of gold that you'd like to get rid of. If that's the case, place a hopper right on top of the dropper or to the side of it. Anything works so long as it's actually going into it, and then place a chest on top of it. Inside of that chest, you'd place even more gold, and the gold would get funneled in, fueling this farm much longer. And that is literally it. That's all you need to do to set up an automatic bartering farm. If you'd like better rates, I recommend setting more of these things up. Copy what we just did as many times as you'd like. And that's it. So long as you don't run out of fuel and so long as your farm doesn't get backed up, this thing will run forever. If today's tutorial helped you out, help it out by dropping a like on this video. You should also subscribe. On the end card, I'll leave my tutorial playlist with all of the other tutorials that I've done ever. Today, big shout out to my patrons, Louisi Innovata, Cricket MC, and I Am Blur. Thank you all so much for the support. Until next time, stay fresh, gamers. Goodbye.